in action against Bert T-shirt from Germany. I'm sorry, just can't help saying it. Okay, we've been saying it all day, <laughs> winding up our German colleague. Don't forget, this is the, the winner of this match will face Danielle Nicholson, the American. And one of them ain't going to get a medal. That's right. Now, this is a battle between the number one amateur heavyweight in the world, Savon, and the number four, Tutor. Savon has had 146 fights, well, now 147 and won 138. He's a collection of 50 gold medals, but of course, he does not have an Olympic medal because it, the Cubans have not appeared in the game since 1976. So this is big chance then, and the South Pole two ship from Freiburg in Germany. In the red vest. And just have a look at Savon's arms. They're probably as long as his legs. And that's one of the reasons that you look at that. Incredible length, aren't they? And that's one of the big, big reasons, of course, that he's been so successful. But uh, one of the others is he can hit massive biceps. Rather small, thin frame, doesn't he? But broad shoulders, big arms. Look at that. That's right. Two shirt got here, beating the Argentinian, Elio Ibarra. 5-1 on points. Savon, of course, stopped Christoph Rojek of Poland in two. Yes, I certainly, I, assuming that Savon wins this, I certainly fancy him against the American. Savon doesn't normally look to do more than he has to. He's got that uh, awesome punching power, of course, and uh, sometimes it takes a lot more than that. And needs to really stick to the rudiments of boxing as well. Don't go looking for the knockout punch, because it rarely comes if you do. He always looks as if he's got a lot in reserve. Not much of a left hooker. Savon concentrates on the long left hand, followed by a right cross. Either to the head or the body. Like that. Well, two shirt, not overawed by this. And he knows a win here would put him in with a very, very good chance of getting into the semi-finals and pick up a medal. Of course, he, he is the world's number four, so he is an experienced heavyweight. Would I be right in thinking that Nicholson is the world's number two? No. I mean, Nicholson was a surprise a Olympic choice from the Americans. He won the, the, the trials, but uh, they really don't have a great deal of heavyweight. Well, stab on there, 4-0 ahead. And I swear I saw two shirt hit him. As in his first fight, he just stands there. He doesn't sit down. Dane to sit down. How do you think he would fare with Teofilo Stevenson in his prime? I think you'd have to go with Stevenson. Mm. 
Be first. Trailing the German. Be quick. But those long arms of Savon make it very difficult for anyone to be first. And I've said that Savon is beatable, but the problem is finding someone with the ability to beat him. And it, it, it looks like a tall order, doesn't it? Well, in fact, it sounds like a tall order, but it doesn't look like it. You know, he's just not... Regardless of all the 50 gold medals he's won, and everything else that goes with it. You know, he, he, you'd expect him to be some kind of superstar. He's not really, is he? No, but the, the quality of opposition is not that great. Because uh, I think the number two in the world uh, is Van der Leyre, the Dutchman, who's not the most insulating of performers. Good job, they're all in bed in Holland. There's Arnold van der Leyre. He's... Uh, in this half of the draw as well. And he will face Ireland's Paul Douglas in the quarter-final for a place in the semis, the medal stage. And Van der Leyde, you're right, didn't look too much at all, did he? Sorry to all our Dutch friends. And who's the number three, Ken? Can you remember? Uh, I think it was actually it was a Russian who's not here. <laughs> this round two then, Felix Savon, the big long-armed Cuban, against uh, this game Bert T-shirt from Freiburg in Germany. Savon 4-0 ahead after the first round. And having a good go here against the Cuban. Showing him no respect at all. Yes, I think we're on about Sudakov of the CIS. Evgeny Sudakov, rated number three in the world. And you're right, he's not in this tournament for some reason. Savon in the blue vest being harried by Touchet. Last 30 seconds of round two. And after this round, Ken, I think you're going to ask the question pertaining to an Irish boxer in the Olympic Games. Yeah, we'll have to ask it fairly quickly because the Irish will be celebrating Paul Douglas. Great win. Yeah, I don't think you better ask it a bit slowly, Ken. We don't want him to lose it halfway. So there's the bell to end the round and uh, didn't do too badly there. I didn't think. Two shirts. Must have picked up at least a point. Let's just see how far Savon's moved ahead. I think that's the only criteria here. Oh, look at that. 8-0 up after two rounds. Right, our question, as I say, not only for Irishmen, but it, there is an Irish angle to it. So hopefully uh, they'll be able to get it. The last Irishman to win an Olympic medal, turned professional, won a British title, lost it to a fellow Irishman, dropped down a weight, and won a second British title. Who is he? There you go. Named the last Irish medalist in the Olympic Games to win two British championships at different weights. Should we give him a clue? No, 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 no. So the third and last round then. And this Cuban gold medal prospect, Felix Savon, and I can't see anyone to touch him really. Not in these games anyway. Against the German, Bert Touchert. I'm sure Savon saving himself for the big one with the Americans. Well, that will be next on his plate. 
and it will be a semi-final, uh, sorry, a quarter-final match. So Nicholson from the United States looks as if he'll go be going home empty-handed. And who would have thought that four years ago, that an American heavyweight would leave the Games without a medal? They usually manage to uh, produce heavyweights for the Olympic Games <coughs> because it is a big thing for them. A good performance here can mean a hefty signing on fee when you, when you become a professional. I'm not so sure that those signing on fees still exist with TV around. I think it's just a promise of uh, opportunity and big purses these days, rather than signing on. Or oh, the John King around. Mustn't mention that name. But a good exposure here can can get TV interested in a fighter, a fighter with a bit of personality, a bit of flair, and a knockout punch. We've seen the Frenchman Julian Lawsley looking very decent, haven't we? Yes, there's one or two good day pro prospects here. Adrian Dod Adrian Carew, Adrian Dodson, who however you like to call him from Britain. My tip for a gold medal for Britain. I'd like to think we had chances also with a couple of others, but uh, Dodson looks rather outstanding in his in his welterweight division, doesn't he? He does, but it's a strong division. I don't think he's going to let me down. Well, a couple of good shots there from two shirts. You could have a range of T-shirts, couldn't you, called Bert? And uh, this Savon Power has not really shown in this match. He's not really been able to keep two shirt long enough, uh, still long enough to crack him. Inside the last 30 seconds end of this contest, but he's winning the fight quite comfortably. And I see, I think he's saving himself for future endeavours. Well, he was 8-0 ahead after two. And he's going to be more than that after this round. And Nicholson, of course, already through to the quarterfinals, but waiting for him, this man here. Or I should say, waiting for this man. Nicholson fancies his chances, but then the Canadian, Kirk Johnson, he does too. He's in the top half. It's all over. Kirk Johnson's got a very good chance of going through, in fact, to meeting the winner of uh, the bottom half of the draw in the final. He's got Tua from New Zealand, the Rooksloss from Czechoslovakia to beat. And that won't be easy. In fact, more competitive, I think, the matches at the top half. So the question now is how far has this Cuban won by? Well, Savon gets it, and that's uh, no surprise. We're going to take another break. 11-2 to Savon. Oh, 